All right, let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mahir. I'm an implementation specialist here at Acurex. Uh, welcome to our webinar on self-book for face-to-face -face appointments. So this is an exciting new feature that was highly requested by practices. And just uh, in a nutshell, we're currently in the process of rolling this out as we speak. Uh, so it's going to be a gradual rollout over the next couple of weeks. Um, but all practices should have access to this feature by the end of August. So we are working really hard to get this out to, to everyone. Um, but yeah, just in case there are any questions right off the bat around when this will be available, um, hopefully by the end of August. Um, just some quick notes. Um, this webinar will be recorded and emailed to all attendees. Um, and if you do have any questions, um, please feel free to pop them into the Q&A section. I have my colleagues, Hannah, Nikita and Libby, uh, who are implementation specialists um, in this call, and they will be typing up replies in the chat. Um, and then we'll also dedicate some time to questions at the end. So feel free to upvote any questions using, there must be a thumb next to each question. So use that button uh, to, to upvote any questions that you want answered and we can cover those. Um, so yeah, what are we going to cover today? So we're gonna, we're gonna go through an introduction of self-book for face-to-face -face appointments. Uh, so like, what is it? How does it work? Uh, and then we'll also go through a little demo to, to show how it looks um, in, in the system. Um, I'm joined today by Dr. Johan Byron from uh, Crouch Hall Road Surgery, um, who will share his experiences and his practices experiences of using self-book for face-to-face -face appointments as a pilot practice. So thanks very much for your time and for joining this webinar, Dr. Byron, really appreciate that. Um, and then we'll also end the webinar with uh, the, the Q&A session, but before that, I'll go through a brief update around another feature we're working on called Batch Self Book. So really exciting um, to be to be announcing all these features. Gonna go to the next page. Um, so this is some feedback that we've had from a pilot practice. Um, this is incredible. It's what everyone has been waiting for. So really exciting news around all of this. Hopefully it will be a game, game changer and it's something that your practice can use and make a lot of use out of. So what is self-book? Uh, so our new self-book feature will allow you to send a single-use booking link uh, for a face-to-face -face appointment directly to your patients via SMS. Uh, you can specify your slot type uh, before sending the link, so it will be configured to the slot type that you choose. Um, self-book is fully integrated with EMIS and System 1, so appointments will be a live reflection of what's actually available in your appointment book. And when you send self-book links to your patients, your patient can book into the appointment and they'll once they do, and once they confirm that appointment, they'll automatically be added into the appointment book without any further intervention required from practice staff. Uh, so users can actually begin to set up appointment slots now um, so that you're ready for when this feature is um, available at your practice. So if you if you do have any specific appointment slots that you want to use, uh, you can create them in the meantime. And then once this feature is available at your practice, you can just get started straight away. So what are the benefits of self-book then? Um, the first thing is it reduces telephone queues and frees up your phone lines. Uh, rather than inviting patients to call the practice to book an appointment and having that back and forth between uh, is this date suitable, is this time suitable with the patient, patients can book directly via the link uh, in their SMS message. That means less incoming phone calls for routine appointments and the phone lines are freed up for more of that, more of those urgent calls. The bookings also integrate seamlessly with EMIS and System 1. The appointment book is added into the, uh, the appointment rather, once the patient books it in, is added into the appointment book. And you can also save the text message containing the booking link to the patient's clinical records. So you have a log of that in the, the patient's medical, uh, medical records. And finally, it just gives an overall easier access to care for, for the majority of patients. Uh, it's easy to use and simple to book an appointment, and I'll demo that for you shortly. Um, and patients will have more visibility, flexibility, and autonomy uh, when booking their appointments, which should hopefully reduce DNAs, um, primarily because the patient is booking or selecting that appointment themselves. They've obviously looked at their diary and uh, figured out a, a time that will work for them uh, in their routine. So um, hopefully there'll be all of these benefits for your practice and then some more. 
um, would be really keen to hear any feedback once you do have access or if you already do have access. So uh, feel free to, to send them through to uh, our support team. Um, so if you do have any uh, feedback around this feature. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the demo now. So I'm going to move over to my clinical system uh, as well as my Accurix toolbar. Uh, so the clinical system that I'm using today is EMIS, but the functionality and a self book for face to face appointments works in exactly the same way with uh, system one. Uh, the only difference is when you save to record in EMIS, it gets saved as a new consultation. And when you save to record in system one, it will get saved as a new journal entry. Uh, so I have EMIS opened up here with a patient um, opened uh, and a patient's record opened. So my, my patient here is Mihir patient. He's a test patient of mine. Um, and I want to send him a self-booking link to book into a face-to-face -face appointment with us. To do this, I'm going to navigate to my Accurix toolbar and then click on the message icon. As the patient is already opened up in my clinical system, they'll be pulled through this compose screen here. And if you've used uh, if you've used um, Accurix before and you are familiar with this, um, you, you may have sent text messages. It's, it's not any different to your normal workflow when sending out a text message to a patient. So you, you should be familiar with this if you have sent text messages using Accurix in the past. So we would, we'd like to send this patient a self-booking link to book into a face-to-face -face appointment. To do, to do this, you need to click on this little calendar icon, which is called add a self-book link. So I'm just gonna click on that. And then you'll be asked to select a slot type that you'd like to send the booking link for. It's taking a little while to load. But once it does load, um, you'll be able to select your slot type in this example, I'm going to send them a slot type for one of our routine appointment slots. So I'm going to select that and then click add link. And that's how simple it is to add that link within that text message. In the text field, I can add as much or as little information I'd like. So the default text is we'd like to, you to book an appointment. Uh, but if this is for a specific clinic or if this is for a specific condition that we'd like to discuss um, regarding the patient, uh, then we can enter that information here. So if I, for example, was to create a flu clinic um, slot type, I could send the booking link for that and then write, we'd like you to book an appointment for your flu vaccination, for example. I'm happy with the messaging in this uh, message field here now, and, I'm, and I'd like to send this off to the patient. So I'm just going to click send to now, send now. Uh, and as you can see, there's a save to record feature and that's by default switched on or selected and what this does is it ensures when you send this message that this text message will also get saved to the clinical records for that patient so i'm going to click send now and then that text message will get sent to the patient once the patient receives this text message they can click on the link which will take them to the uh, appointment booking page. They will have to enter their date of birth to verify their identity. And then they will have visibility to, of all the appointment times that you have made available in your appointment book. So I'm just going to select the next available appointment, which is Friday the 19th of August at 8 a.m. And I'm going to click continue. Once you select your appointment, the, the patient is shown uh, and a summary of the appointment that they have selected. If they're not happy with it or they've changed their mind, they can click change time. But since I'm happy with this, I'm going to click confirm. And what's happening here is that that appointment is now being added uh, automatically into the appointment book. So it will, or you won't have to do anything manual at this point. The patients already booked their appointment and they'll be added into the appointment book and you'll be able to see that reflected in your appointment book. In the meantime, the patient will also receive a text message confirming their appointment. So they'll also have that to hand as a reminder. Once the patient does book into their appointment, you'll get a little status message within that thread, that conversation thread that you sent. And that will tell you what has happened to that appointment and when, or what has happened with that booking link, whether the patient has booked it in and what time it was booked in for. 
The link that the booking link is again a single use link that expires after 48 hours. So if the patient hasn't booked in uh, within 48 hours and the link expires, they won't be able to use that link to book an appointment. Though you would have to send that again to the patient and then they'll have to book in using the new, new link. So that's a demo of uh, self book in the compose, compose screen for face to face appointments. Again, to send a self book message or a self book link, all you need to do is click on the message icon, click on the calendar, select your slot type, add that link in, and then send that directly to your patient uh, with or without an amended message in there. Hopefully that shows how easy it was to send a, a booking link directly to your patient. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Byron now, who will be discussing um, how self-book has been for crouch forward road surgery. Um, so Dr. Byron's practice has been a, a pilot practice for self-book for a couple of weeks now. So uh, over to you. Thank you. Is my mic working? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine. Thank you. Perfect. So I just thought I'd give a little bit of context as to why self-book was the next logical step for us. And as per the quote, I'd agree. I think it is the future that we've really been waiting for. And um, we moved from e-consult to patient triage as our preferred online consultation platform. And um, through patient triage, you can send self-book links already for telephone appointments. So when we're triaging, you know, we often want to book routine face-to-face -face appointments. So it, it, it was a feature that was missing that we were craving. Um, so in order for us to, to action a face-to-face -face appointment or to get it booked in, we'd often send a message to the patient. They may not agree with the time and it occupy a lot of either GP time to organize a face-to-face -to, -face to get a patient in or a lot of reception time to organize that face-to-face -face appointment. So sending the self-booking link was really, really useful because the patient had a choice of when they wanted to be seen and for what they wanted to be seen. And um, bear in mind it's for routines. So uh, my belief was that you can't self book for an appointment on the day. So for any acute things you need on the day, that you've come through triage, you would have to manually arrange. Um, however, anything from the next day onwards, patients would have view of that appointment and they'll be able to self book. And um, one of the things sending self booking links, that's a concern, especially for us, is that you almost send them a link and it's patient responsibility to ensure that they book. So what's really useful in the settings screen that I think we'll hear you probably show later is that you can get a list of all the, the self-book links that you've sent out and you can see what the, the disposition code is. So did the patient book? Did they not book? Was it a failed attempt? Did the patient try to book and they weren't able to get an appointment? Um, so it's a process that you do have to introduce as a way of auditing and checking at the end of the day to make sure everything you've sent out there's been either the patient's not booked or and you need to get back to them or they've failed um, in terms of booking that appointment. And um, how we implemented it initially was that rather than having to introduce that audit process and have an extra function that we needed to do, what we decided to do is purely use self-book for proactive recalls. Um, we started, I think it was maybe a month or two ago now, um, and our plan was to really prepare um, for the flu season coming up and to make sure that we had a really kind of automated uh, way of getting patients in and increasing appointment utilization for flus. So what we did was we piloted it just, just with smear appointments. And um, so we got our smear recall list and in, I think it was the beginning of July, potentially we started and we just used self-book in order to book appointments. And within a week, we, our appointment utilization went from 6.9% to 24%. And that was without really picking up a phone. And now to kind of do that kind of volume of recalls, um, it would often take hours where actually this took an hour for one of our receptionists to, yes, manually enter single text to every patient um, and send the self-book link to them. So I think the next iteration in terms of batch uh, messages would be fantastic. Um, I don't think we, we've only had one problem in terms of one patient that's not been able to book a link. So they've tried and they've, they've failed. Um, but that was very early on. And since then, we haven't had any problems with it at all. Um, there is a workaround. So when you do triage, if patients want particular GPs, um, well, what we've played with are the slot types. So as uh, self-book really does update quite regularly in terms of pulling the slot types that you have from your appointment book. So we've labeled our GP routine appointments um, you know, face-to-face -face GP, Dr. Byron, for example, and therefore on the self-book feature, 
that would come up. So you're also able to kind of manipulate your slot types to enable particular GPs, uh, GP appointment links to be sent to patients. And I probably, I'll wait around for the question and answers. I don't have much more to say, but it's been an immensely useful link. We now use it for both pre proactive and reactive. I'm on call in triaging today and already we're just able to get through the list of queries coming in so much quickly. So it's so much more quicker by just sending out links to patients to come back in. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Byron, that's been really insightful. Um, if anyone does have any questions around um, self book direct to Dr. Byron, please make it clear that it is for uh, Dr. And then we can we can answer those or ask them in the Q and A session. Uh, but really, really great to see how you actually use self book at your practice and and the benefit that it's providing. So thank you for sharing that. Um, so. Also, here are here are two pieces of uh, other other pieces of feedback that we've had from pilot practices. Uh, so this is really a life changing feature for this for primary care. Thank you for working on this. Uh, and face to face self book is mind bendingly helpful. Massive reduction in workload. So really really great feedback from pilot practices so far. Um, again, we hope to have self book um, for face to face appointments released for everyone by the end of August. So uh, watch this space. Really, um, hopefully everyone can make the most out of it. Moving on to batch self book. Uh, now, what is batch self book? So this is another feature that we're working on um, off the back of uh, our first iteration of self book for face to face appointments. Um, so how, do, how will it work? So I've got a video here to show everyone. Uh, I might go through it twice. Um, but the way batch self book works is it's de designed to be the ultimate recall tool for things like your flu vac vaccination programs. Um, it enables uh, practices to invite larger cohorts of patients to book into a specific appointment type. So we're at, at the stage we're currently on with batch self book is that we're hoping to pilot this at the beginning uh, or at the end of August. So in the next couple of weeks. Um, and then we're hoping to have everyone live sometime in September. We will be holding another webinar on this close to the time. So we'll send out invites for that um, as and when we confirm the, the webinar date. But uh, you can find out more information on um, this, on Batch Self Book, uh, on www.accurex.com forward slash booking. So that's www.accurex.com forward slash booking. And that will include some FAQs around um, our self book module also. Um, appreciate that um, blue campaigns, flu season is coming up. Um, we're working as fast as we can to deliver this functionality to support those flu campaigns. So hopefully this will be something that will be available around that time in September. Um, bookings will also integrate with EMIS and System One, and this will be available to all users. So even those that don't currently have access to our batch, batch functionality. Um, and this will be under the, the central contract with NHS England. So the licensing will all be covered. Um, and, and I'll get into a little bit more around that soon. Um, so I played the video a couple of times, not sure if you've seen, seen it, um, but you should be able to select a, a slot type such as flu and then write your template. The booking links will generate automatically once you send it to your patients. And then you can upload your patient list and review before sending off the message. So again, this will be available to all practices under the central contract with NHS England. Um, but yeah, really exciting feature. Um, hopefully it's something that will be a game changer when it comes to, to recall uh, for general recall purposes. And that feature, as well as our self book for face to face, forms part of our booking module. So, what is the booking module? So, this includes those two features: so self book and batch self book, um, and it it will allow uh, practices to book in or manage their bookings for appointments. The booking module is available to all practices in England as part of our um, NHS England contract. The license fee is covered until June 2023. Um, so practices may only need to cover SMS costs unless they're being covered by um, the ICB or Federation. We're currently speaking with ICBs at the moment about this. 
Um, but if you are curious to find out more about this, please feel free to re reach out to our support team. Uh, you should be able to do that by going onto any page of our website and on the bottom right corner of the page, there'll be a little chat bubble, which you can then uh, click on to, to start a live chat with them. Uh, we will update everyone on what will happen after the, the contract ends around June 2023, closer to the time. Um, so we'll make sure everyone's all prepared. But again, you can find out more information on the booking module by going to www.accurex.com forward slash booking. We have some great uh, key information or key pieces of information there around self-book and batch self-book, as well as some frequently asked questions. So that will be your place to go if you have any questions around it or if you have any, um, if you're if you're really excited or curious. So I'm now going to open up the floor for any questions. I'm going to look through the questions now. So there might be moments of silence, um, but feel free to type any questions in the Q&A section. And also, um, if, if, if there's anything that you've got um, directed towards Dr. Byron, please feel free to tag or make it clear that this is for him. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to look through the questions now. And feel free to upvote any questions that uh, you'd like answered. So Neil asks um, around slot types, um, we and I suspect most practices use the same GP appointment slot types for all GPs, for example, GP face-to-face -face appointment. To create, to create individual slot types for each individual D GP and then amend individual weak templates will be a lot of work. Is there any way around this? So I'm assuming this is around um, being able to select specific, specific clinicians um, that you're booking in appointments for um, during the self-book process. At the moment, uh, the appointments are limited to the slot type and not for individual clinicians, um, but that is a great piece of feedback to pass along to our product team. So we'll, we'll be sure that gets passed along. Um, at the moment, if you want to send a clinician specific slot type to or a clinician specific appointment um, options to your, to your patient, you would have to create an individual slot type for that clinician. Uh, I'm not sure, Dr. Byron, if you, if you have anything similar that you employ at your practice. So, so what we found was, so we tried both. We did just generic face-to-face -face GP appointments face-to-face uh, -face nurse appointments um, and then we tried ones where we did change the slot types which was a lot of work to individual clinicians what we found coming from triage was that it was very rare um, for patients to want a particular person um, because triage is really useful because you've got the information beforehand so if it was an issue that needed continuity of care then we'd manually go and book those but that was in the minority um, rather than the, uh, the majority so yeah, we, we've gone back to just having generic slot types, much more easy to configure as well. Perfect, thank you for that. Are there, uh, so Hannah asks, are there any measures in place to stop patients booking into appropriate, inappropriate appointment slots? For example, booking with a GP when it should be minor in illness. Um, so to answer this question, um, you are in charge of what slot type that patient will book into. Um, so before you send a booking link to the, your patients, you're asked to select a slot type. So all you need to do is ensure that you select the appropriate slot type and then send the link to your patient. And then that will make sure they can only book into that specific slot type and not anything else. I can see there's a question around um, the release date for batch self-book. So we are going to be piloting this over the next few weeks. Um, completely appreciate that practices are quite desperately in need of, um, of some kind of certainty around when a batch self-book will be available. Um, hopefully we'll have more information over the next few weeks, but we do hope to um, have this fully rolled out um, sometime in September. Um, and we'll, we'll be able to provide more information on that very shortly. We, we do want to make sure that the feature also works. So we're going to be piloting it with practices to begin with to make sure there aren't any hiccups. Um, and then once we fix any bugs or any issues that could potentially arise, um, we'll, we'll go on to roll that out more nationally.
sorry, Mahir, just to add about picking specific clinicians, because I can see that's another a couple of questions there. Yeah. I think the biggest issue that we had wasn't necessarily seeing a particular person, but delineating between a male and a female GP. Um, so if someone had a preference of, for a female GP, for example, for a breast exam, um, or a male GP, you know, for a PR, that was the kind of question that we were getting through triage, just really who they were more comfortable seeing rather than a particular clinician. Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Um, when can I access self book? So we're, we're again, we're switching on practices right now. Um, everyone should be able to use self book by the end of August at the very latest. So hopefully this will be um, available for practices by then. Will you be Ben asks, will you be able to send booking links via batch messaging? Uh, so yeah, that's part of our batch self book uh, feature. Again, hopefully pilots uh, will begin in the next week or so and we're aiming to have practices switched on by the middle of September at the very latest um, that feature will allow you to send a booking link to a large cohort of your patients via batch message so um, you'll be able to send a booking link for a specific slot type to a large chunk of your patients all at once whereas self book for face to face which I just demoed for you um, will be available to send a booking link to individual patients one at a time. Lisa asks, how long does the link last for the patient? So the links last for, 20, uh, for 48 hours. Um, and then if the patient hasn't booked in by then, uh, the link will expire and they won't be able to use that uh, anymore. They will have to be sent another link. Just looking for some more questions. So Kim asks, who will this be available to? Do we need to sign up if we need it? Uh, so the answer is no. Um, it will be available for all GP practices across England. Um, so you, you, you don't need to sign up if you've already got an Accurix account. Um, if you don't have an Accurex account or you're not using Accurex at your practice, all you need to do is create an account for your organization and then you'll be able to um, use the, the self book and batch self book, book function, functionality. Um, and that, that will be the licensing for that will be covered by the um, NHS England contract that we have. So how far in advance can patients book in appointments? So depending on your availability or, or the availability that you uh, release in your appointment book, um, practices can see as far as up to three weeks in advance or patients rather can see up to three weeks in advance. Um, so if you do have avoid available appointments up to three weeks in advance, they'll be able to see the, those full um, availabilities. However, if you just release your, your appointments on a week by week basis, for example, or create new appointments on a week by week basis, um, they will only be able to see what's available uh, in your appointment book at that time, um, but up to a maximum of three weeks. Just looking for some questions if there are any directed towards Dr. Byron. Byron. I just I did reply to one um, asking when I saw the immediate effects and um, immediate uh, when I how long it took to see the benefit. So immediately if you're triaging because you're dealing with queries much much quicker now. And um, in terms of the recall process, actually within a week, um, we managed to see a really incre an, an appreciable increase in appointment utilization. I think the bit about the how far in advance you can book, I think that was a question. What, what, what we struggle with is, I think beyond sort of, every time we offer anything beyond four or five weeks, um, we noticed that the, there was an increase in DNAs at that point. So I think actually three weeks kind of works quite well for us, especially within our recall process. 
Perfect. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I've just realized we're we're at time, but I can see that there's a couple more questions in the QA section. What we'll do is we'll draw themes from them and then we'll send a follow-up along with a um a, a link to the recording of this webinar. Uh, but I I hope that has been helpful. Thank you so much, Dr. Byron, for for joining. Uh, just one final thing. If you do have any questions or if you do if you are curious about what's included in the booking module, feel free to visit this link, www www.accurex.com forward slash booking um, and then if you do have any questions around specifically when you'll have access to uh, the booking module or um, if you have any technical questions feel free to reach out to our support team at support at accurex.com and then we'll be able to to assist you with that uh, once again thank you very much dr byron really appreciate your time here my pleasure thank you thank you very much take care bye-bye